have your Bibles. You're in church on Sunday night, so we'll assume you do. Turn to Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. And a good place to be. Ask our senior prayers tonight. But if you find your place, Hebrews chapter 8, I want to start reading at verse 6. Hebrews chapter 8, starting at verse 6. The scripture says, But now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, there should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Amen. And we'd ask you if you would to bow your heads. Lord, again, we thank you for another day. We thank you for your precious word. And Lord, once again, I just ask that you'd uh, open it up unto us, Father, that you'd take Doug out of the way and uh, put the words in our mouth that need said. Uh, Father, again, uh, you, you let the message go the way it needs to go tonight, Father. And if there be a need of burden, we pray to be brought to you. And Lord, again, we thank you and praise you and ask all these things in Christ's name. And amen. Amen. Everything is better with God in it. Everything is better with God in it. Uh, folks, we're going to show our age again, okay? There used to be uh, an ad campaign commercial, and a lot of you remember it, that said, everything is better with blue bonnet on it, okay? Now, Bill, other than me and you and Paula Dean, I don't know if uh, <laughs> some grandmas that's already in the... Yeah. the cemetery uh but folks that's true everything's better with butter on it okay uh, we our mom used to make homemade bread joe and uh boy that was good stuff in the morning billy uh but it was even better when butter yes. hit that that homemade bread amen okay yes. and uh you say, well, everything's better with butter on it. Folks, listen. Toast without butter, yeah. Becky, that's a crouton. It's true. <laughs> I mean, that, that's good for salad, Bill, but it's just dry bread without, that's right. okay? That's right. But, folks, uh, that, was the, that was the ad campaign back then was everything's better with blue bottom on Folks, listen, everything is better with God in it. Amen. Everything is better with God in it. Folks, listen. Your job is better with yes. God in it. Yes. Your marriage, your Amen. relationships Amen. are better with God in it. Your family is better with God in it. Uh, Sandy, there are people that think, well, listen, we got a good family. We're close, whatever. There's no comparison. <laughs> Folks, yes. you look at families without God yes. and build, you look at the change when God comes Amen. into the picture. Amen. Everything's better with God yes. in it. Folks, right. listen. Uh, and if he's not in it, okay, uh, education is better with God sure, in it. The sure. government is better with Amen. God in it. Folks, Amen. listen, the courts yeah. are better with God in them. Yeah. There's nothing 
that's good on its own. Yeah. Folks, listen, everything is better with God. And that's what he says, listen, he has attained a more excellent ministry by how much he also is the mediator of a better covenant, Amen. which was established upon better promises. Amen. Folks, listen, there is no religion that you're going to find salvation that Christ isn't part of. If Christ isn't involved in it, then it's just the concept, Bill. Right. It's just the practice. It's just the theory. Yes. It's just a, a way of life. But folks, listen. Without Christ, there is no salvation. Amen. There is no Amen. salvation. Everything is better with God in it. Folks, listen. Uh, but we want to talk about things that are better. Yes. Things that are better. Listen, everybody's content with all things are good. Things are good, okay? Things are better with God. Amen. Things are better with God. Uh, folks, listen. Two is better than one. Yeah. Yeah. Two is better than one. Right. Okay? Uh, Ecclesiastes 4 9. It says, Two is better than one, for they have a, a good reward for their labor. For if the one fall, the other will lift him up. Right. But woe unto him that is alone when he fall, for he hath not another to help him up. Folks, listen, two is better than one. Amen. And there are those that would look and say, listen, uh, I believe in God. I can serve God at the house. Folks, listen, that's not worship, Sandy. <coughs> no, it's not. That's not communion. No. That's not fellowship with other believers. That's right. Two is better than one. Uh, Matthew 18, 20, uh, that's what he says. He says, listen, where two or three are gathered together in my name, yeah. there am I in the midst of them. Right. Folks, listen. It is better when you have more than one. Yes. If you only have one person that you can count on, then what are you going to do when they're not available? That's right. That's right. Now, folks, again, we've said this time and time. You can call Doug at 3 a.m. and we'll answer. Mm -hmm. Uh, it may take us a while, and we may be groggy, but we'll answer. <laughs> but there are times, Becky, that guess what? You may call, and I may be in a meeting. That's right. Mm -hmm. Or you may call, and I may be uh, uh, on vacation or whatever. Right. Uh, folks, listen. Two are better than one. Yeah. You have a whole church <laughs> That's right. that you can lean on. Amen. You have others that are Christians that you can lean on. And folks, listen. The people that are just staying at home said, listen, I can do this on my own. No. Two are better than one. Amen. And folks, if you don't believe that, then come and see. Yeah. Yeah. Come and see. Put us to the test. Yeah. That's right. Come to church for a month and see if it's not better to have others yes. to pray with. Amen. To pray for you. Yes. To be thinking about you. Okay? But but things that are better, okay? Uh, folks, listen, a good reputation yes. is better than a good bank balance. That's right. A good reputation is better than a good bank balance. Okay? Uh, Proverbs 22.1, I believe. says, A good name is rather to be chosen. Harley, a, a good name isn't given. <laughs> it's not granted like a, a night ship from the queen. Okay, right. A good name is rather to be chosen Amen. than great riches yes. and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Amen. Folks, a good name, Mike, that's the problem. Yeah. People don't want a good name anymore. True. That's right. It True. doesn't mean anything to them. That's not viewed as success, Glenna. It, it used to be way back when, and again, here's Doug showing how old he is, Bill, <laughs> that, listen, your name meant something. Amen. Your reputation meant something. Amen. But today, it, it's just how big is your bank balance? Yeah, that's right. How big is your bank balance? Uh, on back in Proverbs 16, 8, something like that. Uh, a little is better with righteousness than great riches. Uh, a little is better with righteousness than great, than, than great revenues without right. Yes. Than great revenues without right. Folks, listen. A good name. A good name. Okay. Bill, you know what would straighten up McDonald's? <laughs> Not you and Peggy coming over and leading the boycott because the ice cream was <laughs> broke. 
And folks, listen, I'm not picking on McDonald's. We went, we stopped there last night. We could have just went on home after yeah. we come back from the promised land. But uh, Bill, we sat there for like three minutes in the drive-thru and the person behind us got aggravated and yeah. went to the other one. And then they still had to wait. Yeah. Kind of laughed. Well, listen, <laughs> if they wasn't like no man, did you think he was going to get me? <laughs> yeah. But folks, you know what would straighten McDonald's up? You know what would put the fear of God in them? It, it isn't us going over to protest. It isn't go, us going over to preach. You know what would put the fear of God in them, Mary? If Chick-fil-A <laughs> yeah. opened up next door. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. That is true. A good name. Yes. A good name. Folks, listen. Chick-fil-A makes more in six days a week than all these others. Seven days a yes. week, Mary. And they even had the drive throughs open all night. Folks, that would put the fear of God in, in McDonald's and, and yeah. some of these other places. Listen, where Mary used to work, uh, they ain't afraid of each other. Mary, there was Wendy's, McDonald's, Taco Bell, Domino's all right in there, and none of them was afraid of each other. But I guarantee you if Chick-fil-A showed up on that block, yeah. <laughs> there'd be a difference in service. Right. Yes. yes. Better is a little with righteousness yes. than great revenues without right. Right. Folks, listen, a good name. It's better to have a good name than a good bank pile. That's right, amen. Because guess what? A good name will endure something. Yes, that's right. A good name will be remembered. Folks, yes. listen, your bank balance is going to somebody else. Amen. Amen. Whether it's the government, whether it's your kids or whatever. Yeah. And guess what? It's just going to keep being passed hands. Yeah. It's just going to keep being passed hands. Yeah. But a good name is better than a good bank account. Yeah. A good name is better than a good bank account, okay? But things that are better, okay? Folks, ignorance is better than stupidity. Ignorance is better than stupidity, okay? And I know a lot of you don't like that word stupid, okay? Well, you all pray for us, and uh, <laughs> God will let you get through it, okay? Awesome. But folks, listen, ignorance is better than stupidity. Because if you're ignorant about something, guess what? You just don't know. You don't have knowledge. But folks, stupidity, you know what makes something stupid? I know, and then I still make a dumb choice. Mm -hmm. Folks, that is stupid, okay? That's the difference between ignorance and stupidity. Ignorance is better than stupidity, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Second Peter. 220 somewhere around there said that uh, if you have escaped for those that have escaped the pollutions of the world okay through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and become entangled again therein and overcome the latter end with them is worse than the beginning for it would be better if they had not known the way of righteousness than to have known and went back. Folks, that's why ignorance is better than stupidity. If you're ignorant, you just don't know better. But folks, listen, once you say you know better, then guess what? You've lost your, your right to complain, okay? That's why we quote James 4, 17 so much. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Mm -hmm. Folks, listen, you can't say, well, I didn't know better when you do. And if you do know better, then Mary, we can't look and tell God, well, listen, you can't hold me accountable. Well, sure he can hold me accountable because I've said, I know that I ought to do this. Mm -hmm. I know that I ought to accept Christ. I know that I ought to come to church. I know that I ought to read my Bible. I know that I ought to pray more. Folks, listen, ignorance is better than stupidity. Because if I'm ignorant, I just don't know better, Harley. But if I know better, and then I keep doing the same thing, that's stupid. Now, see, I didn't call you all stupid. <laughs> I said that's stupid. <laughs> so that's all right. You all come pray for me at the end of the service, all right? Or before, I don't care. But folks, listen, ignorance is better than stupidity. There were people that, that did things in ignorance, Billy, and it said that God winked at that. But now that he's gave us his son 
And there's no excuse. There's no excuse, folks. Listen, we've lost the excuse anymore. There isn't ignorance. There's just stupid choices. Okay? But life is better than death. Life is better than death. Okay? Uh, you say, well, Doug, that's pretty obvious. Okay? <laughs> life with God. Life with God. That's what we're talking about. Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Folks, listen, we say this all the time. There are dead men walking. There are dead women walking. Mm -hmm. Folks, listen, some of them are your relatives. Mm -hmm. Some of them are your friends. Some of them are your neighbors. And Mike, they're dead men walking because they don't have Christ in their life. Mm -hmm. Folks, if you don't have Christ in your life, then you're dead. Mm -hmm. And folks, listen, life is better than death. Life is better than death. But things that are better, okay? Grace is better than the law. Grace is better than the law, okay? Well, Doug, you, you preach out of that Old Testament quite a bit. Don't you think we need the law? Yeah. Yeah, you need the law. But Mary, here's the thing. All the law can do is tell you you're guilty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thou shall not. Well, I did. Well, I'm guilty. Okay, That is all that the law can do. But folks, here's the difference with grace. Grace provided a solution, mm -hmm. Joe. What was that solution? <laughs> the cross. Amen. Amen. The cross. Folks, listen, grace is better than the law, okay? Uh, at the end of Hebrews 11, uh, around verse 39, somewhere in there, it said, all these having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise. And again, you can go through that 11th chapter and read all the heroes of faith, but he says there at the end, all these having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise. God having prepared some better thing for us that they without us uh, should not inherit, okay? Or should not inherit the, the promises, okay? That God providing some better thing for us. Folks, what was that better thing? Mm -hmm. Jesus? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Folks, listen. How is grace better than the law? For one thing... <laughs> We don't have to uh, have a pit up here, Harley, that we slaughter sacrifices all the time. You know why? He made one sacrifice forever for everyone. Mm -hmm. Folks, listen. How can you not understand that that's not better? <laughs> one sacrifice, good forever, good for all the sins that you committed in the past, Good for all the sins you're committing now. Good for all the sins that you may commit in the future. As opposed to all these endless sacrifices. And folks, listen. Uh, scripture tells us, listen. The blood of bull and goats can never take away sin. The blood of bull and goats can never take away sin. But folks, listen. The blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. How, how, how is grace better? Uh, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. To cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Folks, listen. How is grace better? It extends mm -hmm. and extends and extends. Folks, listen. Under the law, guess what? Every time you failed... You had to offer a sacrifice. Every time you sinned, you had to come and offer a sacrifice. But here, in the latter times, he's provided a perfect sacrifice mm -hmm. that, again, is good for all time. To good, good for all time, good for everyone. Folks, listen, grace is better than the law. The law can only tell you where you failed. Grace can not only tell you where you failed, but it can help you recover. Mm -hmm. 
It can help you recover. Folks, the law can never help you recover. It can only tell you where you was guilty. Okay? Heaven is better than earth. Gee, Einstein, you're really <laughs> telling us stuff we didn't know today, right? Heaven is better than earth. Well, sure, we know heaven's better than earth. Okay? Uh, folks, listen. To be with God in heaven is better than to be with God on earth, okay? Philippians 1.23, Paul writing to the church of Philippi. He says, I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, it is more needful for me to remain with you. Folks, listen. There are people, and folks, you will get to this point in life that guess what? You just want to go home. Amen. You just want to go home. Uh, hard at listen. There are a lot of people like Margaret mm -hmm. Anderson mm -hmm. that, listen, she just wants to go home. Mike, I don't know what God has in store. He may keep her here another three years, but I know that, you know what? She's tired. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 97, 98, I don't know how old she is now. But folks, listen, when you went that long, Glenda, guess what? We're tired. And you've heard Hubert say this, and it was true then, it's true now. Folks, listen, when you get to 97, all your friends are gone. That's right, amen. Amen. Half of your family is gone. Mm -hmm. When my grandma was 98, she only had one sister left, Becky. There was like 11 of them <laughs> starting out. Guess what? Everybody that she grew up with, Billy, they was already home. Half of her, over half of her family, 90% of her family already in heaven. Folks, listen, it's better to be with Christ in heaven. It's good to be with Christ here. It's good to have God and Christ in your life here. But folks, listen, it's so much better to be with him there. Amen. Why? Because up there, Mary, guess what? We said this this morning. No pain, no sorrow, no death, no tears, no sin. Folks, heaven is better than earth. But you wouldn't know that, Joe. You know why? Because people fight like the devil to stay here. People fight like the devil to stay here. You say, Doug, that ain't true. Okay. You ever take somebody out to the creek and hold their head under the water? <laughs> you know what's going to happen? Boy, them arms and legs are going to start flying. They're going to be trying to get up out of there. Folks, listen. There are people, they've wasted all their health building up their wealth. Mm -hmm. And Sandy, at the end, you know what? It's the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. They've spent all their wealth right. trying to get that health back. And mm -hmm. guess what? It ain't coming back. Right. It ain't coming back. Folks, listen. That, heaven is better than earth. But there are so many people that they are so consumed with staying on this earth that, Mary, they don't understand there's a better one waiting. Amen. There's a better place waiting. But, folks, listen, things that are better, heaven is better than earth, okay? There's a better way. There is a better way, okay? Uh, now, my wife and kids would say, not Doug's way. Okay? <laughs> folks, there's a better way. There's a better way. Okay. First uh, Corinthians 12, 31 uh, said that you should desire the best gifts, but I show unto you a more excellent way, or I show unto you a better way. What is the better way? Jesus. Amen. Christ. Okay. Proverbs 14, 12 said there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There's a way that seemeth right. Folks, listen, there are so many people, they're just going through this life and saying, well, I'm just doing the best I can. I'm doing what I think's right. Well, that, that's good for you, but guess what? That's not a better way. What is the better way? Jesus. And Harley, he's not only the better way, he's the only way. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, not a way, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
Folks, listen, there's a better way, and it's Jesus. But there's people that are trying this way, they're trying that way. Listen, I, I'm a good person. <laughs> I'm a good man, I'm a good woman, I'm a good whatever. Folks, hell's full of good people. Heaven's full of uh, <laughs> murderers, liars, adulterers, <laughs> thieves. <clears throat> now, wait a minute, Doug. You all, you've told me this before, that we're not allowed to do all that stuff. No, but guess what? Folks, that's what all of us were mm -hmm. until you met Christ. Mm -hmm. that's, right. that's what all people were. You pick whatever sin you want. It, it, Mary, even if it's only James 4, 17, guess what? You've sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. But guess what? He can forgive all of that. He can cleanse all of that. But you've got to find the better way, and the better way is Jesus. Uh, the better way is Jesus. Okay, It's better to trust in God. It's better to trust in God. Okay? Again, uh, Becky, I sound like uh, Thomas Jefferson. These truths are self-evident, right? I'm not telling you all anything new that you don't understand. But folks, it is better to trust in God. Psalms 118.8 said, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better than in the, to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Folks, why is it better to trust in the Lord than to trust in man? Because man will let you down. Man will let you down. Folks, listen, there are people that hardly I trusted completely. And you know what? That trust, I was completely let down. Now, folks, again, it, you need to trust people. You need to have some confidence in people. But you need to trust in the Lord. Because people are going to let you down. You all remember there was a song that Brother John sang there at Homecoming. He said, listen, you can't count on me, <laughs> but you can count on him. You can't count on me, but you can count on him. Folks, listen, guess what? The preacher's going to fail you. The preacher's going to disappoint you. And here's the good thing. <laughs> Right back at you. <laughs> Amen. Guess what? The congregation disappoints the preacher, Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, when you put confidence in man, you're going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. When you put confidence in man, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, when you put confidence in princes, when you put confidence in, in your leaders, you're going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. It's better to trust in the Lord than to trust in princes. Okay? Folks, don't put your trust in Trump. No. Don't put your trust in Kamala. Don't put your trust in whoever. Because no. you know what? They're going to disappoint you. Mm -hmm. They're going to fail you. Folks, let me tell you, not only in the presidential race, but in a lot of other races, Harley, if Christ come for his church, that morning after the election, there are a lot of people, Mike, that are going to be looking at those candidates. And they're going to ask the one, well, I thought you said that wasn't true. And Becky, then they're going to look at the other one and say, why are you still here? Mm -hmm. Now you think about that, folks. <laughs> That's the sad state that we live in. I ain't telling you who to vote for. I ain't making any judgments on somebody's salvation. But Mike, that is what would happen in a lot of cases. That if Christ come back, Billy, early in the morning and takes his church out, they're going to be looking at these two princes or wannabe princes, and they're going to ask the one, listen, you told me that this wasn't true. Where'd everybody go? And they're going to say to the other one, why are you still here when you claim to be part of them? That's why Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Folks, listen. The Republicans don't want to direct your path. The Democrats don't want to direct your path. The communists, the socialists, the whatever, they don't want to direct you. They don't want to provide instruction. They don't want to provide direction. You're just a vote. 
And guess what? After November, whatever, I don't even know what day election is. You won't matter. Now, amen or ouch. Folks, listen. It's better to put your trust in God than in man. It's better to put your trust in God than in princes or leaders. Okay? But what's better? Okay? To obey is better than sacrifice. To obey is better than sacrifice. Uh, 1 Samuel 16. You remember uh, Samuel had been gone and Saul had, uh, he had given the commandment for Saul to go and to destroy the Amalekites. To kill man, woman, beast. To hardly to leave nothing. He comes back and he asked Saul, listen, did, did you do what God told you to do? Yeah, I did what God told me to do. Okay. Folks, if you're going to lie once, you better be prepared to lie about five more times. Because <laughs> you know what, Sandy, the first thing he said? If that's the case, why do I see King Agag right here? Well, we killed all the other ones. Why do I hear all this sheep and cattle when I come walking up the road? Well, we thought we'd use that for sacrifices. He asked him, he said, has the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and in sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? So Saul, listen, do you think God's happy? You think he takes joy in what you've done? To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Folks, listen. God doesn't want a bunch of sacrifices. He wants one sacrifice. He wants a living sacrifice. Uh, Romans 12, the first part of that chapter. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies... Holy, a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service. Folks, listen, he don't want a bunch of blood from bulls and goats and uh, lamb and sheep and turtle doves. You know what he wants? He wants a living sacrifice. That's what he's telling Saul here. He says, listen, do you think God's happy with what you've done? He's got thousands of cattle. He's got thousands of sheep. What he wanted was your obedience. Folks, what he wants today is our obedience. Amen. He doesn't want your sacrifices. He doesn't want your offerings. Listen, you want to write a big check and put it in the plate? Good. You got a Ben Franklin that's burning a hole in your wallet? Put it in the offering. That's fine. But God's not wanting that. And that's what David says in Psalms 51, okay, verse 16. He says, Thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. After he had sinned with Bathsheba, after Uriah had been killed. He says, Thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Glenna, David could have offered thousands upon thousands of sacrifice, but he realized, Lord, that's not what you want. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of the Lord are a broken spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, a broken and contrite heart, O Lord, thou will not despise. That's the sacrifice he wants. He wants this to break. He doesn't need more animals to be broken. He doesn't need more things to be offered. He needs this to break. To obey is better than sacrifice. Folks, listen, there are people that, uh, again, they have this attitude. Listen, I've got to make up for all that I've done. Folks, you'll never make up for all your sin. Mm -hmm. You'll never make up for all your wrongdoing. Uh, Joe, listen, we was nine years old when we, we come to the Lord. And even at nine years old, I done had a bill that was bigger than Doug could pay. And folks, listen, some of you were a lot longer coming to the Lord after that. Mm -hmm. And guess what? That's a bill that you'll never be able to pay. Mm -hmm. 
to obey is better than sacrifice. That, that, that old song, the old account was so long ago. The old account was large and getting larger every day. But I just kept on sinning and never tried to pay. My name was at the top and many things below. But I went to the keeper and settled long ago. Amen. Folks, listen, you got to go to the keeper to settle because you'll never be able to pay what you owe. Mm -hmm. You'll never be able to pay what you owe God. David couldn't pay it. Paul couldn't pay it. Peter couldn't pay it. Hubert couldn't pay it. Doug can't pay it. Folks, you can't pay it. Mm -hmm. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken. You know what that is? To hearken is to listen. Harley, that's the problem with a lot of church people. <laughs> they don't listen anymore. Mm -hmm. They hear the preacher, but Sandy, they don't listen to what is to what God's word says. Folks, if we would just obey and listen, you would see a big difference. And I'm talking about the church, Larry. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about church. Listen, if the church would just hearken to what God's word says. You would see a big difference, and then you know what? You'd see a difference in the world. Because they're going to look then, they're going to say, wow, something's going on. I'd rather have what they have. I want to, to, to have the life they're living. But folks, listen, everything is better with God. Everything's better with God. If God isn't in your life, then folks, you're missing out. You're missing out, and you're in need. Everything is better with God in it. Uh, Peggy, you want to get us a song? Folks, if you have a need today, the altar's open. Let's try page two. Page two. Walk with the Lord in the light of His Word. What a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sight nor a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but it's blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, 
For we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do. Where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen. Folks, that's a true song. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Uh, folks, there are people that they, they think they're happy with the mm -hmm. life they're living, but is Jesus happy with it? <laughs> You're, you're never going to be happy with Jesus unless you learn to trust and obey. Unless you learn to trust and obey. All right. All hearts and minds free. I think he fell mom in prayer. She, I guess she fell on him. Mm -hmm. okay. So again, remember, uh, Sister Margaret, uh, we have a card. And read. It says, We appreciate you, your kindness, your understanding, your thoughtfulness. The way you give yourself so willingly, so selflessly shows just what an incredible people you are. Uh, dear church, love all the food, drinks, and the I'm going to call that blanket, Mike. I think that's what it says. <laughs> uh, when Joanne's fit to come back out, she can tell you all what I messed up, okay? But I uh, uh, love all the food, drinks, and the blanket. As always, uh, you are our church family and always uh, take care of us. How do we say thank you? And that's, again, love and prayers from Mike and Joanne. Uh, again, we... Thank God for all that he's brought Joanne through. Mm -hmm. uh, pray that he continues to let her get stronger each day to where she can get to where she can come back out. Okay, but, uh, remember Joanne in your prayers also. All right. Again, uh, prayer meeting Wednesday night, Children's Church and Youth Group, so remember that. Any other announcements? Pray that uh, God gives you a wonderful week this week. I don't know. Maybe I'll start praying he, he gives people a hard week. <laughs> or maybe I'll start praying some of them back out, you think? Here, I have I keep praying God's good to you all. Maybe I need to pray he starts putting some uh, whoopings on some people. Mm -hmm. Maybe that one. All right. We've done preached. We'll quit. <laughs> Bad nights. <laughs> Again, uh, good to have everybody out tonight. Good to have Brother Billy with us. Uh, Billy, if you would, dismiss us. Lord, we <clears throat> come in Jesus' name this evening. We're thankful for the good service, the good testimonies, uh, good praying, mm -hmm. and the good preaching. Lord, thank you for Brother Doug and his wife and them. Mm -hmm. Keep blessing him and his ministry and Pinterest here and, and very good people here, Lord, and keep us all safe until we meet again to, in the house of prayer at the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. 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 Amen.